Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we're back on the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 49, and here we are! I am back! I am so happy to be back. I've just come back from Portugal. I had a holiday, of course. Mentioned that in the previous episode of Hermitcraft. And a bunch of you have been tweeting me, writing down comments down in the comment section, telling me to have a wonderful time, asking me how the holiday is going. And I just wanted to say right at the start of this episode, I have had a wonderful time. It really is nice to get away outside of the country, take a look at some other things. Portugal is sort of my common holiday because we have some friends out there. And it was lovely. It really was very nice. I had a brilliant time. The only slight negative thing that I will mention is the fact that we actually had better weather in England than they did in Portugal while we were away. So that's a little bit of a shame. You know, it is a bit of a shame because obviously Portugal is usually very nice and it's just a bit of a kick in the teeth to know that England actually had better weather than us while we were away. But you know, you can't have everything. And like I say, I had a fabulous time out there, but it is nice to be back recording Minecraft videos as I do. And straight away, I've come on here on Hermitcraft ready to do some Minecraft action. So we have got a bunch of really awesome things planned for today's episode. But before we begin, there's a few bits that I just quickly want to mention because there is a bunch of stuff occurring on Hermitcraft over the next couple of weeks that I'm sure you will all want to know about. So first off, we are going to be holding a Hermitcraft live stream weekend. Now this is a very exciting event. It's the first time that we've done something like this, so I personally cannot wait to see how it all goes. And information for that can be found on the Hermitcraft website, which is something that I've never really mentioned in my videos before, but Hermitcraft does have a website and it's brilliant. It acts as a sub feed for all of the Hermitcraft members. So you can hop on there, get a reliable source of videos because everyone knows the YouTube sub boxes, they can be just a little bit all over the place occasionally. So yes, hermitcraft.com is a reliable place to find all of our videos. And of course, there is also a lot of information on there about the live stream weekend, including a full schedule and the dates that it's on. On top of all of that good stuff, I've also got another announcement to make, and that is the fact that I've finally caved in. I asked you guys on Twitter, would you like me to get a Snapchat? And the overwhelming majority said, yes, yes, we would like you to get a Snapchat. So I have one, it is called Snap Mumbo. So if you do want to add me on there, I don't know what sort of thing is going to be posted. It's probably going to just be lots of pictures and videos of my cat. But there might be occasional pictures of my face or various things that I'm up to. So yes, it could be quite interesting, I suppose. And if you do want to check that out, Snap Mumbo is the username. I'll also chuck a link to the image that you can scan in with your fancy mobile devices down in the description so you can do all of that stuff that I don't fully understand. But you should be able to add me on Snapchat. So that is pretty much it. But anyway, as you have noticed, Right at the start of this episode, I have been destroying easter eggs. That is right ladies and gentlemen, the easter egg hunt has been completed. A lot of the hermits got involved and I'll go through that in a second, but before we do, I think it's time for a time lapse of me taking out all of these eggs. Fingers crossed, I actually cleared out all of the remaining eggs. I have no idea. As you guys know, my memory is absolutely awful. I've mentioned that many times now. So I have a feeling that I have forgotten one or two of them. I know that some of the hermits got involved and actually took down their own Easter eggs, which is fair enough because I placed them in the middle of quite a lot of people's bases. So I'm assuming that got quite frustrating. So yes, in theory, the Easter egg hunt is now all cleared out. There is no more remaining eggs and I've handed out all the prizes. So that is all done and dusted so we can move on from that one. But anyway, you may notice I am in my special room, it has got all the farms and things, and in today's episode, we are actually going to be working in this area. We are finally going to be starting work on the storage system, and I cannot wait to get that one up and running, but before we do, I just want to point out a few changes that I've made. Boom. I mean, first off, okay, there's a few technical changes, but first off, you may notice there has been a slight design change, and I have to say, it just gets better and better. Each episode that goes by, it is getting better and better. I mean, honestly, I think at one point it's going to get too good, okay? I might have to tone it down because it is getting too good. It's making all the other hermits look bad. 
But more importantly, we also have a few extra chickens. So that should mean that it's going to produce a little bit more chicken. And we also have a feather filter. So we've got a hopper down here. Filters out all of the feathers, meaning that we don't get feathery chicken in this chest here because that's not particularly tasty, is it? But anyway, as I mentioned in today's episode, we're going to be working on the storage area. The plans for today's episode consist of planning, designing, and making the whole place look pretty. We're actually going to be doing it in a bit of a strange order. We're going to be doing the framework and then all of the good looking stuff. And then we will do all of the technical stuff in a future episode. But before we do any of that, we have to work out how we are going to be doing the technical stuff so that we can build the pretty stuff around it. I hope that makes sense, but it is going to involve hopping it into my redstone testing world because I've got a few little designs that I really do need to show you. So this here is our storage room template. This little slice uh, that you can see right in front of you. What we have is we've got two layers of chest and then we have got all of the technical redstone bits out the back because of course we can't just build the storage area and then try our best to fit all of the redstone around it because that would be a bit of a problem because then if we built it in such a way that we couldn't do the sorting system we'd have to take down all of this stuff and start over. So that is why I've done all these technical bits and as you can probably tell I'm using Impulse SV's sorter design. A lot of people have been telling me to use that. I took a look at it and it is fantastic. It's one of those things that doesn't allow you to have overflow problems which was a big issue with various different sorting systems so that is now fixed and it's a nice and sleek design that is repeatable and easy to build so I can't wait to get started on that one but of course we have got to do all of this stuff so what we're going to have is we're going to have iron pillars then a bunch of chests then another iron pillar then a bunch of chests and so on and so forth right the way to the end of the room and that is pretty much it that is how we're going to be doing our sorting system and hopefully it should end up looking fairly decent at least fingers crossed it is progress update time, ladies and gentlemen. I have done a bunch of stuff since the previous cut. Been working pretty hard here. So, first things first, you may notice there is a big chunk of metal that used to be here that is now no longer present. I have finally moved the beacon back to the original position, so it's at the front of the base. And we also have a speed effect. Let's see if we can get that going, because it's pretty awesome being able to just shoot around my base at great speed. There it is. Right, there we go. So I can now fly around the base just fine, making way around the whole thing. So yeah, that's pretty good. I've taken off the haste effect because that's what we used to have. So yeah, speed is now a lot better. But sadly, it doesn't quite reach this area. So maybe we'll have to add another beacon in at some point in the future. But also, may notice that we have got ourselves a new bit of flooring here. It continues on the theme from this previous room. In fact, quite a lot of this build, almost all of it, is going to continue on the theme from this room right here. We're going to try and keep it in keeping, you know, same style as the rest of the base and things because I think that style works quite well. It's nice to get a bit of continuation. Of course, we're probably not going to continue the theme from this area here, as good as it looks, okay? It really is one of my best looking builds. I don't want that on such a large scale over here. So I think we're gonna be sticking with these sorts of blocks that you can see right here. So that is the plan at the minute. Our archway is coming along nicely. Of course, once we start getting some chests and everything like that, it should all start filling up and start looking pretty good. But anyway, that is that part done. But I've actually just been reminded of something because I was just reading through the chat. Biffa has just joined the server and I just remembered that he has placed a little statue thing on the inside of my base. I have no idea what it is. I have not read the book. I believe there is a chest with a book on the inside of it. I just literally took a look at it. I think it was in a live stream actually. It was live. I saw that it was there and then I never ended up doing anything with it. So let's make our way over to this statue here because I guess I should probably take a look. Right, here we go. Here's the book. Hashtag THG. I have no idea what that means. Let's take a look. Welcome to the first The Head Games. Oh no, this could be pretty bad news. You have been chosen as tribute for your district and will compete in the head games. Your head is needed for display in the capital, aka the museum of all things. The first head games will be televised on the tubes of you for all to enjoy the spectacle and revel in the delight of your head being displayed in the capital for all to see. Your head may be removed at any time, so prepare yourself. There will be no lit winners only headless losers. Good luck and let the games begin. Oh boy! Oh, that scared me then! So that means that Biffa is a headhunter. He is going to be coming around and he's going to be chopping off the heads of all the innocent hermits. 
Oh, I mean, I'm pretty bad with mobs, as you've seen. I'm pretty bad with mobs. I, I can't deal with that sort of thing. I I've got a cold sweat on. I've got a I'm already nervous. I don't feel safe on the server anymore. Oh boy, this could get interesting. I swear XP Crafted Space is actually becoming just a little bit of a second home for me. It seems to be every episode that I pop on over here just to take a look around. And yep, everything's still looking pretty cool. Right, I am caught up in a little bit of a struggle here. As you can see, we've got one side that is compressed ice, and we've got one side which is diorite. So, hmm. I mean, I sort of like both of them and don't like either of them at the same time, and that is probably the worst situation to be in in terms of Minecraft projects and things. What I'm, what I'm thinking is, is that maybe I should chuck in some chests yeah, I think that might be the best idea, to be honest with you. I think we're going to have to chuck in some chests, get some ideas as to how all of this looks, because currently I am... I've been sat here looking at this for around about 15 minutes, because obviously it's preventing me from doing the rest of the build, okay? So I've been sat here just trying to think things through for around about 15 minutes, and yeah, it's not coming up with anything at the minute. So yeah, chuck in some chests, and we'll see how it looks then. Right, so I've been doing it a little bit more fiddling and a little bit more staring at the screen blankly. That seems to be why I've spent most of my time on in today's episode, just staring straight at the screen without really knowing what I'm doing. But I've fiddled about a bit, and you can see I've set back the ice and the sea lanterns and things, and I think it looks really good. I think it looks considerably better than the original design, which means that all of our chests are going to be pushed back slightly, and then all of these arches are going to stick out. But the main problem, the main problem with this design that we're going for here is that first off I've now got to remove all of this stuff so I've got to take out all of my hard work that I've worked on but another thing is is that I no longer have a silk touch pickaxe to my name which means that all of this stuff that I'm breaking right here is gone forever I'm losing it okay we are wasting a large quantity of resources but oh well it looks good and that's the main thing one side is done and things are beginning to take shape now. Finally, finally things are beginning to take shape. I can just imagine this full up with chess. I cannot wait to see what that looks like because I can imagine it is going to look really very impressive. There's going to be double chess going right the way across like this, double chess all the way across here, and all of those will have items frames on them, of course, because they are all going to have various different items they are going to be automatically sorted into them. It's going to be great. This is the project that I wanted to work on for a very long time now, an automatic sorting system. And one thing, actually, that I feel like I should point out is that... We're going to have two double chests for every kind of item, okay? There is not going to be any specific items that have more chests. I suppose I could do that, but there's not going to be anything like that. I am considering rerouting all of the item drops, for example, cobblestone, dirt, and all of those different types of blocks like andesite, diorite, and all that sort of thing into the storage silo system because I seem to get a lot of those sorts of blocks, so it might be good to have some extra storage there. But other than that... Pretty much all the items in the game are going to be going in this area, all into separate chests automatically. It's going to be great. You know what, guys? I think I might give myself a bit of a pat on the back for this one. Because, as you guys saw in the beginning, when I first started building this, I was scared, okay? My initial designs, my initial ideas weren't particularly good. I was worried that it was going to be really ugly. And obviously, the storage area is a big deal. I spend a lot of my time in the storage area. It's like the main area of the base. It's where you spend most of your time, basically. And I was scared that I was going to make it look really very rubbish. But I feel like it has all come good. It has all gone really very well. And this build has come together extremely nicely. I mean, look at it. I have to say, I'm not usually one for congratulating myself and saying that I've done a decent job on builds, but this is one of those ones that I feel very positive about indeed. It just looks good. It looks really cool, the way that the shapes work, the way that we have all of that depth. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's quite a busy build, but it's happy days for me. I think this looks absolutely lovely, and I think it will only look better once we start getting all of the chests in. Now, obviously, speaking of that, that's a big project, okay? That is a lot of wood to get, if you think that to one of these double chests here, that uses, what, four? Four logs? So you need four logs for this chest, four logs for this chest, that is eight logs, and that means that this, just this one row, is 16 logs. You know what? I'm going to do some calculations. I want to see how much wood we are going to need for all of these chests. I've engaged my brain a bit, and I've done a little bit of math. So each one of these modules, this whole thing here, requires 80 logs. So that is... What, 320 wooden planks? Or it consists of 80 chests. 
Now, luckily, we have got 10 modules here, which means that we need 800 chests or 800 logs, which is also known as 3,200 wooden planks. So it's quite a lot of wood. It's actually a little bit less than I was expecting. I'm a little bit disappointed there, but still, that is a large, large batch of wood, and we're going to have to do some serious wood farming, and I personally don't think my little unenchanted diamond pickaxe is really going to make the cut, which means that we're going to have to head over to the Endermender and do just a little bit of enchanting. So from that super quick enchanting session, I managed to get myself two awesome pickaxes. It was on the first time as well. Didn't even do any shuffling around or anything like that. As you can see, we got Efficiency 4, Fortune 3, Unbreaking 3, and we also got Unbreaking 3 and Efficiency 4. Now that if you're asking me, is a pretty sweet pair of axes. That's awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. So now we're going to have to hop back over to the tree farm. And I'm going to have to start the long and boring process of just mining straight on through it. So as it happens, we couldn't actually use the tree farm, not because it's broken, but simply because we do not have enough oak wood saplings. And sadly, the tree farm relies on you having oak wood saplings. We only had about four of them, and I tried my best to use it, but we ran out immediately, which wasn't particularly good. And that does mean that we are now unable to use the tree farm. So we had to do it the old-fashioned way, which, you know, it actually works quite well. We have managed to get ourselves a decent amount of wood. Now in today's episode, we're going to be doing half of the chest, so we're going to be doing one side of the farm because there's still a tiny bit more decorating that needs doing as well, so there's still some things that do need doing and then I guess in the next episode, there's a little bit of other decorating that I have to do around the base, but also I'll have to chuck in the other side of the chest. But anyway, I have now got to craft all of this into various different chests and trap chests and then I'll catch you guys in a little bit. I seriously can't remember the last time I had that many chests. That is impressive. And that's it. One side of the chests are in. We have used up a bunch of them. You can see we have not got much left. But then again, that's actually not that bad. I mean, it used a lot of wood, okay? It used one heck of a lot of wood. There's no doubt about it. That was a lot of chests. But you know what? I actually think that we will be able to do the other side in today's episode. Originally, I was thinking, no, I am running out of time right now. I am. I am running out of recording time. But I reckon we'll be able to squeeze this one in. I reckon we'll be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start work on this side. And hopefully we should be able to get all of the chests in for our storage area in today's episode. That would be a pretty good end. Here it is. The final double chest has been placed in. Boom. That is a lot of chests. We have got plenty of storage now. I mean, I was a little bit worried that maybe this storage system was a little bit small. We can extend it if necessary, but honestly, I'd actually say we're pretty good. And I've just thought, I really hope that lava doesn't spread fire to these chests because that would be pretty bad news. But as far as I'm concerned, that is it. That is all we need. We have managed to do everything that I wanted to do in today's episode and a little bit more, which is nice because that doesn't usually happen. Of course, there's still a few details that need working on it in the storage area. For example, transition between this room and this room. It's not particularly brilliant. And of course, at these end bits, all of these little details, there's a few things that need doing around here just to make things prettier as well as elsewhere around the base. I've still got a few bits to do around the tree farm and all that sort of thing. So I guess the next episode is probably going to be a little bit more odd jobby. We're going to be doing various different bits and pieces, working on different projects and things. But yeah, I'm happy with this. I am so, so happy with the way that this room has turned out. It's been an awesome project to work on, and I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I'm glad that I'm now starting work on the storage system, because that's something that I've been missing for a very long time now. So, 
It's good. It is all good. It is all good. And we are good to go in terms of building this sorting system. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.